When I was a teenager in Penang, mm. and I was uh, going to the New World Park, and I was standing around the theater. The theaters at that time were kind of uh, just half built. The walls were not totally up to the, to the skies. And then you can just stand outside and you can watch. And what I was watching was Chinese opera and Bangsawan. And the Bangsawan was done by people like uh, Rahim B, Rohani B, and Raman B, and the Chinese opera, of course, I didn't know who they were. But that was my growing up days in Penang, mm -hmm. when I was watching live theatre. I was taken to see a production of Julius Caesar my God. at the age of seven or eight. Oh my God. And uh, it was in a little theatre called the Jane Street Theatre in Sydney. I sort of sat there, I think, for the first, first half hour or so, looking at my friend Philip and I'm thinking, I wonder if he's enjoying this, because I don't understand it. I started to get involved and I started to feel, oh, this is, this is magical. But I didn't understand it, but it didn't matter. I think it was the whole wonderment of it all. You know, it was wonderful, wonderful. And that's, that's what attracted me first up to theatre. I think from that day on, in my subconscious mind, I was thinking, I want to be an actor. I can act. I can do what they were doing. And then I finally realised at the age of 15 or 16, that's really what I wanted to do all my life. I believe that was kind of professional because it was uh, Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew and I was in college and I played the role of uh, Kate. I still can feel the slap that I gave Petruchio. So that was professional, yes. <laughs> that was my very first. I think the reason I felt so very good about it was because I had good lecturers at a Kota Baru Teachers Training College. And people came to me and said, Farida, that was this and that was that. And ah, I felt like an actor. <laughs> professional in the sense that there was a huge audience. Uh, not professional in the sense that I was paid for it. It actually happened while I was at school. The school that I went to in Sydney was De La Salle, a De La Salle school. And we were very much a macho sports school. Right? And then we had this, this wonderful teacher by the name of Brother Raphael, who uh, came to us and said, I want to introduce drama into the school. And we looked at him and said, what? <laughs> you want us to walk around in tights and sort of sprinkle ourselves all over the stage? And then he said this to us, he said, okay, how many girls do you think would watch you at a football game? And we said, oh, maybe 20, 30. He said, do you know how many girls would watch you if you were on stage in a theater? Immediately, we became an acting school. <laughs> Immediately, without any doubt. So there's a, a competition in Australia. I don't know if it still exists now. This is when I was 14. And it's called the Genesian Drama Festival, which is an Australia-wide festival for schools. And we did... Our very first entrant was, we did uh, the court martial scene from the Cain Mutiny. We won best play, I won best actor, and that, again, I think, confirmed something inside me that, that I wanted to act. This I wanted to- This professional world. This, this was where I felt, I felt comfortable. Not so much that I was acting, it wasn't the acting part of it so much, just that the whole environment, the whole feeling of theatre, it doesn't matter if nobody else can share this feeling as long as you yourself feel it and it is truly your very private, very personal and only you can be happy about it, that's okay. But that's what it is that drives me on. Yeah. There have been several um, for me, only because I studied under the Stanislavski method so everything, everything happens inside and, and you believe it and it becomes like, you know, uh, you're gonna die, you know. Uh, but the, the most difficult was Ibsen's Ghosts. When I was with the National Theatre, after I graduated from NIDA, 
I went to the National Theatre as their actor in residence from the East, went over to the West in West Australia. Uh, and this was one of the plays we did. Now the reason why it was difficult is because if you know the story, I played the role of Oswald Alving, who inherited syphilis from his father. So the sins of the father reflected on him. And his last line at the end of the play is he's sitting down at his mother's feet and going blind. The last line, which always brings tears to my, to my eyes, was, mother, give me the son. Give me the son, mother. Because he was going blind. And for months after that, I believed that I was having syphilis. I went to the doctors, I double checked, triple checked. I said, you know, I'm, I'm sure I've got syphilis. I've got all of, the, Symptom. all of the symptoms. I know all the symptoms because I've just finished doing a play. And the doctor said, don't worry, Joe, you don't have syphilis. <laughs> so from that point of view, that was very difficult. The other most difficult role was Streetcar Named Desire. I played Stanley Kowalski. That play, number one, the difficulty I had in, in um, coming to terms with the fact that I was with actors and I had to sort of purge all this anger on them really hurt me. But afterwards, after we finished again, after we finished the play, for months after, I, I had, I had a, this problem controlling my temper. Sometimes a character will live in you longer than, than, than others, you know, and, you, and it, will, it will come out, it will come out. So that were, they were the two most difficult roles. Darling, your turn. I... Okay, enough. <laughs> <laughs> is, is you, um, I um, am Malay who do not speak very good Malay. But her hot piano is very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't mind trying uh, theatre in Bahasa Melayu. There was one time when I was cast in um, this French play of No Exit. And it was called Pintu Tertuto. And it was directed by Dinsman. And it had uh, Amat Yatim. Uh, one of the staff of uh, Dewan Bahasa dan Pustaka, Rogaya is the name, and myself. I truly made a big fool of myself because I could not memorize the words as well as I should have done so. I, of course, blame the director because he did not <laughs> get me. Of course, he did not director. lock me up in the room and say, Farida, memorize the lines before you can come to the next rehearsal. But I did not. I could not memorize the lines. I just couldn't get it inside of me because I believe the Malay language is very difficult, especially for um, Pintu Tertutup, which was translated by an Indonesian. And it was very difficult language. And I was a fool to go and try to speak together with Amat Yatim, who is very good, and Rogaya, who was also very, very good. So there I was on stage, trying to look cool and remember my lines, and requesting for prompt every now and again. It was really, really embarrassing, awful. I would never, ever, and I truly feel so embarrassed. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> or go and give yourself a year or two to master the language and the play before you do it. I mean, it is totally embarrassing for the performer and also embarrassing for the audience to see this actor fumbling Oh my goodness, don't touch it. Mm. Christian Jit directed me in uh, a play called The Madness of Lady Bright. Working with Christian was a joy. It was a joy because I hated it <laughs> and a joy because I loved it. 
I loved the, I hated the fact that I loved it and I loved the fact that I hated it, you know? Uh, nothing to do with Christian because Christian, Christian is a very uh, astute and, director. And demanding. And demanding. And uh, as, an, uh, uh, as, as, a, as a director, I can also be demanding, but as an, as an actor, I believe that you should be made to, to go out of your comfort zone. Suffer. You know, yeah, I think actors have to suffer, just like artists, they have to suffer to, to produce good work. There was a great fear inside me that because we only had 12 rehearsals and it was a one, one man play, uh, that how or what, what method do I utilize to make sure that the character was inside me and yet the lines were also there? Uh, because I couldn't learn the lines parrot fashion because I was never taught to do that. I cannot learn lines parrot fashion. I, I, they have to mean something to me. Uh, so what I did to rid myself of that fear was that I would write the entire play by hand. By writing something down, it sticks in the memory. But also because you're doing it freehand, you've got time to think and exactly what, your, what the meaning of it is as you're writing it down. So every day, every night after rehearsals, I would go home and I would write the entire play in this one exercise book. What a great idea. Uh, it was wonderful. At the end of the production, uh, as, a, as a sign of respect, I presented that exercise book to Christian and, and there was a a little bit of a, a tear there, and a little bit of a tear on my part as well, and I think everyone around us sort of appreciated the, the gesture. Uh, but that was how I got myself out of that one. Uh, out of others, it's a belief in what you are doing. It's a belief in the process. Because I think a lot of actors these days, because they don't have strong directors, don't understand the process that they're going through. And that process is, as you know, is so important. And if you believe in that process, if you follow through with that process, you can get rid of any demons because what you're doing is becoming that character for that particular space in time. And that's, that's how I, it's just belief, belief in what you're doing. I think Malaysian actors and performers are better in this day and age than they ever were because they're more educated, because they, they either have, have, have studied or they've gone out of the country for a few years and, and gotten involved in theater or, and, and, and watched a lot of theater. Judging from the productions that I used to watch when I first came to Malaysia, back in the early 80s. I strongly believe the pool of talent that we have today is much better equipped to handle what it is that's required of them. I only wish we had more than the two handful or one handful of directors who could cope with this big talent pool that we have because I think that's one of our biggest weaknesses mm. is, is in, in the areas of we don't have enough good directors. And strangely enough, some of our best directors are women. Since I have seen uh, Malaysian um, performing arts from the yes. uh, 50s, from the late 50s, um, on one hand, Malays the Malaysian scene of performing arts has grown beautifully. We have come so far. We have developed so many uh, talent of, in the industry. But at the same time, we have gone backwards a little bit too much in the form of the traditional art form, which is, we all, as Malaysians, we should all be very, very sad about it. Why do we as a country allow tr the traditional art form to be almost buried and now we have to dig it up again in order to see 
any signs of good traditional art form all over again. It may never come back. It may never come back. But I, I wish that the powers that be and also the industry itself will not allow this sadness to happen to the country. It is something we must be very proud of because it belongs to us. And on top of that, as a country, Malaysia is so very rich in the in the in the quality of the culture that we have you don't i mean i'm not talking just about peninsula malaysia from the states of perlis right down to johor and then there's sabah and then there's sarawak and there's so much culture in all these states but we don't seem to be wanting to be proud of this what we have yeah. i'm not saying that we do not do modern theatre and opera and musicals and all that, we must do everything. But we must also not allow what belongs to us to, to die, die away. Die, yes. As a country, you know, we must feel how proud we are about what we have. We must feel it in our bones. We must know that this belongs to us and do something to protect it. Yes, absolutely. From, from the point of view of, of learning, both Farida and I very strongly believe that you never stop learning. But the things that I have learnt is that every actor works to their own timing to their own beat of their own drum. So as a director, I cannot expect actors to be all there, ready, in, in terms of their characterization and in terms of their knowledge of the character at the same time, because actors work in different ways. So that's what I learned. I learned as a director, and I also learned as an actor never, ever to say, that's what it's going to be, you know, because it will change. The more you learn about the character, the more you learn about the interaction you're going to have with your fellow actors, it will change. There is so much to learn yes. on the floor yes. uh, that you may not have had the opportunity to learn in a college. And I'm an actor who never went to college um, for the skill that I have today. And I honestly do not feel that I am at a disadvantage. Only maybe the fact that I have not mastered too many languages. I mean, I feel that as a, as a, as a disadvantage. I mean, I'd like to do like the French ac accent or the German accent or the whatever, whatever. And I'm not as skilled as I wish I could be. But other than that, there is so much that an actor can learn when they go to a rehearsal and when they give the 150% attention to what it is that they are doing, the full living of that character, that everybody has to believe in. One of the most important things that I have learned, uh, to my dismay, uh, is that most Malaysian actors, the first thing they ask themselves when they get a script is, how do I say this line? How? They use that word how. I wish that the word how never existed in the English language. Even as an actor and as a director, I have problems with actors who ask themselves, how do I do this? Yeah. Rather than, why am I doing this? Happens you know, all the time. What am I doing? <laughs> all the W questions that we should be asking. But the first question a lot of Malaysians ask, a lot of Malaysian actors ask, is, how do I do this, Joe? You do it by not asking yourself how. <laughs> we sometimes spoil our actors by giving them comp, comp tickets, you know? And we have now decided from now on, no more comps. 
for any of the actors. You're getting paid, paid for God's sake. Yes. We cannot afford anymore to give you a complimentary ticket if you are uh, earning a, a salary at being an actor or a director. Mm. Yeah, you know, ag again, because... You know something? When we go to see one of our own shows... We buy a ticket. We buy tickets. <laughs> Yeah. You too. Yeah. yeah, we buy tickets. We're stupid. People no, say, no, we're not stupid. No, we're not stupid. No, that's the discipline. It inculcates. You want. It's not just us. It has rubbed off on some <laughs> members of the staff as well. But we yeah. want more. Some of we our staff are also doing it now. We want more of this to happen. We want it to be never questioned by anybody. Can I have a free ticket? And this free ticket business in Malaysia is such a bad habit. Oh, ah. God, it makes me so embarrassed to give or to be to hear I mean, anybody if asking it were, for it. If it were a school, orphanage, things like that, gladly. But they're not free. We will pay for the yeah. tickets, or we'll find someone to, to sponsor pay for the, the tickets. tickets yeah. Right. So, no free tickets. Yeah. Headache. Musicals. Musicals, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> so we take our hat off to Pam Productions because we think that musicals are the most difficult thing in the world to do and you guys seem to make it look so easy. But for us, it's very difficult. Yeah, but we, we want to do good musicals. Yeah. We want to be a part of doing good musicals. Malaysia wants to see good musicals, but musicals are very difficult to do. And but it's I, very expensive but, as well. The elements that go oh, into... My goodness. And the copyright. Secondly, the fact that uh, there's the musicians, the choreographer, the dancers, the actors or performers, uh, the costuming. The, um, it's the whole thing. And unlike a play where, as a director, I can say, OK, now this is, this is my vision of it. We're going to... Do that, that, that. With... with uh, a musical, a musical, which, which I love, I love the collaborative situation, but what I hate is sometimes I have to say, I'm sorry, but your ideas suck, change it, come back to me, and let's, let me see it again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, I think it's because of all of the components of a musical. Malaysia has not really trained uh, enough actors to carry musicals well. We, we just have you know, I not, mean, not you know. enough talent. Because this is an art form that is the most difficult. And you need to be trained in all, in acting, singing, dance. We wish musicals can be done more and more in Malaysia and, and really good ones, stunning ones, you know. And also, let's go back to the Bangsawan and the Mayongs, which are also musicals.